Hi YouTube, it's your girl Natalie, the one true diamond, coming at you with a morning chit chat video. Um, oh, on my way to work as usual, and I don't really have anything to talk about this chit chat. And talking about these knees of mine, oh my God, they are killing me. I think they're trying to tell me. I'm too old for insanity. I don't know, but they, you know, it just seems like they're bothering me really bad this week, and I don't know why. I don't know if it's just me trying to stop, but I'm not going to stop. I'm going to keep pushing. Saw the, I don't know how many of you saw the video this morning of me sweating just like, I don't know. Why do people always say sweating like a pig? I've never known a pig to sweat, but <laughs> that's our little country saying, I guess. Anyway. I was sweating bullets, so I was working it out. Still sticking with Sean T and his madness, his insanity. He named it the right thing, you know. And you would think, you know, as I do it, because this is the third week, that it would get easier. But I guess if it's getting easier, then your body's getting adjusted to it, so you don't need it. So I'm going to look at it that way. <laughs> I'm going to look at it that way. It's hard, so it's doing something, you know. And just like I had said on my previous video, I don't know why my seat is doing that. Okay. On my previous video, um, whew, what did I say on my previous video? <laughs> oh God, my mind is bad this morning. But like I said on my previous video, um, with the insanity thing just got to stick with whatever it is that you're doing you just gotta um you gotta keep pushing don't let it get to you you know you know what your goal is and no matter what it looks like no matter what the scale look like you got to keep going and keep pushing and that's what I decided to do was to keep pushing to keep going because I know um that in the in the aftermath it's going to happen and sorry, y'all better sleep. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry about that. But in the overall, the big picture, you got to look at the big picture, not the little small square that's right in front of you. You got to look at the big picture, the final outcome of what's going to happen. And see, I know in this weight loss journey, I've been doing it, like I said, now I've been on this journey for like three years now. And that's what happens. Some weeks I don't lose weight. Some weeks I might gain weight. Then the next week I might have a big drop in weight. So, you know, my body just does some things. It does whatever it wants to do. So I let it do that. You know, and as long as I am keep pushing and keep doing what I'm doing, I'm not going to let it stress me out. Um, next month I have an appointment with the nutritionist to see if she has any suggestions for what we have found out concerning um, my gastric bypass surgery, um, as far as eating habits, things that might would help, as far as um, the feeling of, it's not that I don't feel full, because when I'm eating, I do feel full, but it's only a matter of minutes later, I feel like I am starving, you know, it just feels like I'm hungry all the time, and it kind of makes sense when I look at what Dr. Chapman found out when he did the upper GI he found out that um, my pouch is fine, it's, it's okay but um, my openings are enlarged so the food is probably just sliding right out after a minute, matter of seconds it's not having time to actually sit there and work his way down as if, if my openings were a little bit smaller and my GI series that I had done the other morning, my phone is shaking, sorry. The GI series that I had done the other morning, it showed that um, everything was fine. So everything's looking good as far as the pouch goes. So that's a blessing that it's not stretched or anything like that. So I'm pleased to hear that. But I just got to find a way to work around these enlarged openings. I got to find a way to do something. Um, and I'm sure making sure I stick with the no eating 30 minutes before and 30 minutes after might would help that and maybe find foods that are bulkier that might not um, be as bad like you know try to stick with protein 
I'm just gonna have to start back really measuring my foods again and um, I'm just gonna have to stay very in tune in what I'm eating how I'm eating and you know it's actually what I'm putting in my mouth what I'm putting in my lips I have to just um, stay focused and watch what I'm eating it's what I'm gonna have to do so I'm just trying to look at it that way you know trying to keep all snacks and things away from me where it makes it easy access and of course I did not cook dinner last night because I told you I had a doctor's appointment yesterday it was concerning my back I had injured my back on the job back in 2004 and yes we are still going through this process um, of what's what um, final outcome and I almost got depressed at one moment there when I talked with the doctor and he was like I see you're limping you know and, and it's like I guess I've always known it because I've always had pain and numbness down the back of my right leg and I think I just kind of learned to live with it you know like it wasn't facing me and then you know I could just tell by some of the questions that he was asking me as far as being in the medical field I could just tell by some of the questions he was asking me that it wasn't always, it wasn't such a good, I guess you could say outcome or whatever. So as he was walking me out the door, you know, I asked him, I said, in your honest opinion, on your assessment on me today, I know it's off the records because you can't put certain things in the report, which is fine, because when you're dealing with workers' comp, anybody who knows that, know that um, they're only looking at the injury. They're not looking at the long-term outcome because you know they don't want to pay out for the long term outcome or what possibly could be could or might be it might not happen and it might happen so that's how they look at it and they have a whole <clears throat> different scale for disability rating and it's not the same as the AMA's um, disability rating so that's way off base for I'm sorry you guys got way off but anyway getting back on track um, he told me that he felt like eventually the disc above my disc that's injured, which is my um, S1, what is it, <clears throat> L, S1, L5, something like that, is what was ruptured, and that um, the, he feels like the disc above that will eventually wear away, that some arthritis will set in it, and that he feels like I have some type of nerve root. Um, yeah, damage to my leg so he said eventually I feel like you will eventually have to have surgery and because he kept talking about surgery the whole while I was in there getting my assessment I'm like I'm not having surgery as long as I can walk and get around I'm not having surgery because working in this rehab I have seen so many people have surgery and they're no better some of them have even gotten worse and I just don't want to take that chance as long as I can walk and I can move I might have pain every day but I'll just bear through the pain I've learned to adjust to it I don't want to have to have surgery so you know it's kind of depressing to hear that after a while you will have to have surgery and I'm like oh my god but then I said okay whose report are you going to believe do you believe that Jesus died and bore all your sicknesses on the cross? You know, I had to talk to myself, um, you guys, concerning this. And I said, God is a healer, and I believe him to be my healer. You know, he's just, he won't just heal you, you, and you. He'll heal me, too. So, you know, I'm just believing that, you know, and I'm not knocking medical intervention because I take medications. I've had surgeries. You guys know that. So, I'm not knocking that. But... I'm just believing that I'm not going to have to have surgery and make things worse. And if I do, then God can work his miracle through that surgery also. So, you know, I just look at it that way. You know, he gives man knowledge to do the things that we do do. So that's how I'm looking at it. But I don't want to be discouraged or down or depressed. And, you know, when I was walking back to the car, I almost was to the point of where I wanted to cry. And I'm like, why are you crying? This is an if or, or might be. It's not... A death sentence so you've been through worse girl you better shape it up and get it together 
So I did, and I got it together, and I'm going on, and I'm looking at it in a positive way. So I'm not going to let things keep me down. And just like I said, even with doing this insanity, even though I hurt, my elbows hurt, my knees hurt, the back of my thigh is burning, and it's pain, and it's stinging, I still keep on keeping on. So... That's what I'm saying all this to say. Keep on keeping on. No matter what life brings at you, you got to keep a positive focus, a positive outlook. Know that God loves you and he cares about you. So today, give him all the praise, all the glory, all the honor that is just due to him. You know, just give him some praise. Thank you for waking you up this morning and giving you another day to get it right. Bye, you guys.